Welcome to Wagered on Tilt, everybody. I am T, and today we are going to be talking about the Poisson distribution. Now, I know I've done this in several videos before where I showed different ways of doing a Poisson distribution in the tables within Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel. However, today I want to go through how can you do it in VBA, which is code that you can put inside of Microsoft Excel. Now, the Poisson distribution that we've built in the past is it takes the information and then it dumps it into the table. The table runs a bunch of formulas and then outputs the info. In today's video, we're gonna go through how can you actually write code to do that in less than a second, less than two seconds. It's really powerful for when you're dealing with a lot of complex information. This way you can start integrating code blocks like this into your actual betting models. And then that way you can do Monte Carlos and Poisson distributions and run all your calculations through code rather than relying on your computer to have to use up a bunch of RAM to try and calculate all this stuff in a spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So we do have a new method of collecting the expected goals for a game based on a team lineup. However, one of the things that we did in the past was that we had a macro take the information, drop it into the spreadsheet, and look at an actual Poisson distribution table. Now that worked decently well, but it wasn't the best that we could do because sometimes those tables will take a while to actually update and display. So what we're going to do now is write actually the Poisson distribution table in our code and then have the code figure out a lot of this stuff for us. And that way we don't have to rely on utilizing um, just a table with formulas that take time to update. So we're going to go through the Poisson distribution for the chance to win. We are going to go through also a macro in the next video on over-unders and running these through uh, actual code versus doing them via the formula. So in this model, what we have is a very similar soccer model, and I'm going to go ahead and start creating this subroutine that I need. So I'll type in sub p dist for lineup. And the reason I'm calling it that is because this is a different model that I'm testing out that's based on expected goals on an average of each player in a given 10 man team per game. So that sounds complicated. That'll be covered in another video because again, I'm still testing this out. Um, so I'm distinguishing that this Poisson distribution is for that list. That way I can compare and contrast. How did model A do in its Poisson distribution versus model B in its Poisson distribution? So I need to also then do our typical application dot screen updating equals false and then application dot screen updating equals true. Now that we have the screen updating turned off, we're gonna go ahead and set up some additional uh, values that we're gonna be using. So I need the home expected score. So I type it as home X score equals worksheets dashboard dot range B3 dot value two. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and set worksheets dashboard up onto its own variable. Uh, we did that in other videos where you were taking that and then storing it. I don't need to call this all that often, so I didn't take the time to write that, but you can do so if you want. So what this is going to do is going to take a look at B3 and say this is the home team, and this is my expected goals based upon what my output was saying on my lineup predictor. So I'm also going to set one for the away. So away x score equals worksheets dashboard dot range b3 oops, sorry b2 dot value 2 now that we've set that up we need to evaluate chances to win so we're going to say chance away team wins now we're going to create an on the fly variable as we did previously which is summed away chance and again if you don't want to create on the fly variables and you want to declare them all at the top of your code go for it it's just, this is how I typically write things, as I can quickly churn these out. And then when I go to actually collect all of my models together, I will clean up the code later. Next, we need to go ahead and begin creating a loop. So I'll say for x equals one to six, next. Now, often we on the Poisson distribution table include zero as an option. I'm not including it here because this is gonna see how many times do we predict that the scores could give a win to the away team? The away team cannot win if they have zero. So we are not accounting for spreads. This is merely based upon the expected goals in a money line type of bet. 
Um, we are not taking into account any kind of weird spreads or anything like that. So again, if it was 0-0, it's a draw, it's not a win. If it was 0-1, to one, they lose, and so on and so forth. So we're going to start with 1. And then I'm going to say A for away. P, C, T for percent. Chance equals 0. And then H, P, C, T. Chance equals 0. Now in here, we need to add a additional loop. So 4y equals 1 to x. Next. So what we're going to be doing is iterating through these. So what's going to happen is we're going to do a loop within a loop, and then it's going to try and predict everything. Because remember, we have a vertical and horizontal axis on our table that we typically look at. This is building at that exact same thing in code. So now I'm going to say APCT chance equals application dot worksheet function dot Poisson underscore dist. And we're going to put our X, right? So the X value that's passed in is going to be our value. So this first loop would say one and then our away score, away X score, and then false. Then what we can do is just go ahead and copy this and paste this and then we're going to clean this up a bit because now we're going to see H percent chance, right? And then we need to update this to Y minus 1, Y minus 1. So in here what we're going to do is this is like saying for the team to go ahead and look at the first away goal and what is the percent chance they're going to get that one away goal. And then this one is going to say we're taking the away goal count, right? Because if we're passing X, this counter is going to be going up to X. And then we're going to say now subtract one from it. So in this first loop, it's going to say the away team, what is the chance for them to get one goal? And then this one, it's going to say, what is the chance for the home team to get zero goals? Then we need to actually multiply those together because same thing we did that in the Poisson distribution table where we multiply the two. So I'll say product value equals APCT chance times HPCT chance. And then I will add one last variable down here, summed away chance equals summed away chance plus product value. So again, what it's going to be doing is looping through and collecting us our probabilities of those teams winning um, based upon the goal counts, right? So in here, it's going to loop through and get our chances that they're going to win. So by setting this up on X, it's going to say the away team is going to start out at one goal and we're going to loop through. So then it'll say one to one. So this inner loop will run once and it will then subtract one from Y, which gives us the score of the away team at one goal, the home team at zero. We're going to multiply their probabilities to get our product value. And then we're going to add our product value into this, uh, what's an aggregate, right? Or an accumulation, or it's just, you know, a continual bucket to get all of our percentages of chances. Then on loop two, it's going to come back through and say X is now two. So it's going to come in here and say, we're going to check one to two. Then on the second pass, it's going to come back through and say the away team to score two and the home team to score one. In all those scenarios, those are the teams winning as the away team. Now, I know that sounds a little complicated, um, and it a little bit is if you're not used to loops and things like that and ways that you can do timers and countdowns and things like that. But trust me, this does work. This is a method to do this where you can build the Poisson through code. There might also be other ways. If you find another way, great. Please feel free to share it in the comments. Uh, that way we can all improve our outputs. So now we need to store where we have our actual values. So I'm going to say worksheets dashboard dot range C2 dot value two equals summed away chance. And that's going to then drop in here the away team's chance to actually win. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and go on to the home team chance to win. So I'm going to copy this information and hit that and I'm going to change away to home then we're going to keep these chances because we're flushing them out right so that's good and then when we come in here this one 
is going to stay this way, but we're just going to switch this out for the y minus 1. And we're going to rotate this one to x. And this one will be left as that. And then this one is home. So that is one thing that I just noticed I messed up up here. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. Home x score. So again, it's going to do the same kind of loop where it's going to keep counting and saying while the away team has one more goal. And then in this loop, it's going to say while the home team has one more goal. The nice thing is we just have to change out these two values in here and then we're done with this one. And same thing, we'll copy this, paste that there, and we'll change this to home just so that we don't lose track of where we're at. Home, home, okay, and home. To calculate out the chance to draw, we need to do that one as well because that is part of our Poisson for games where you can actually have a draw. So we're gonna say uh, summed chance equals zero, and I'm going to then say for x equals zero to six, and the reason that I'm going from zero now is because a zero, zero score could give us a draw. So I'm going to say APCT chance equals zero and APCT HPCT chance equals zero. So we're setting those up to zeros again. Tab this in so it's a little bit easier to read. All right, so then we're going to say the APCT chance equals application dot worksheet function dot Poisson dist. Okay, so again, this is the away chance. So we're going to put x, so whatever that value is, away x score false. And then what we can do is just copy and paste this one in again and just flip the information for the home. So we'll go ahead and take this one, put that one to h, take this one, set this one to home. So now it's going to say what are the chances of them getting zero as the away team, zero as the home team. And then it's going to go ahead and multiply these. So product value equals APCT chance times HPCT chance. Then we will say summed chance equals summed chance plus product value. Then we're going to come out of this loop. So close that one and worksheets dashboard dot range c4 dot value 2 equals summed chance and that's it for this loop so now that we have all of our values correctly set in the code i did have a few typos that i had to clean up because it wasn't finding the variables uh, we're going to go ahead and run this and see how fast this runs and there you go so it has already calculated out the Poisson distribution. And one of the great things about this is that you can actually set this up so that it will run this way and get you the information you need fast, right? This is much faster than loading it into a different table and running calculations and waiting on formulas to calculate things out. So we can actually go ahead and flush some of this stuff. So I'm going to flush this info and I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna get rid of this. In this and I have a lineup tool again um, built in here that is new so I'm still testing that but this is going to run all of the information I need and we're going to see how long it takes all right so what that's gone ahead and done is given us our expected goals for the game it's given us our Poisson distribution of chances it's given us our Monte Carlo over unders and then our Monte Carlo simulations for chances to win. Now, it did seem like it took a little bit longer to run. The difference though is in Google Sheets, I typically have mine set up to run um, 10,000 scenarios and run those Monte Carlos 10,000 times, right? Now, since I'm doing this in code, I decided to up the amount of Monte Carlos. By doing it in code, it actually ran through 100,000 scenarios for each version. Um, so that's really fast comparative to Google Sheets. So if you want something more complicated um, that can spit out a lot of great data like this, this is the way to go is with Excel. 
Um, or you can start learning other development uh, code languages such as like R or Python that will also help you. So that is it for this piece. And this is again, just doing a Poisson distribution through code. And there you have it. All of our codes has spit out all of these values so I can make an educated decision. Please disregard though the values that are showing in this sheet. I do not suggest if you see this video before a game to bet this. This is just a testing model. I do not know if these values are gonna work out. Um, I still need to do more back testing and evaluations on some of my formulas and things like that. So I do not suggest that you go ahead and do any of that. So that is it. That is how you write a Poisson distribution in VBA for Microsoft Excel. As a reminder, I am not a professional developer, so I don't write code for a living. I know that I don't follow all the standards and practices of writing code. So if that bothers you, feel free to change how you write your code. I really don't mind. Um, it's your model, not mine. I just want to try and get this out there so that people can understand how to write this stuff in a very simplified version. So using the VBA code, that works really well. Again, you can mix and match this with all kinds of other types of pieces of code that you're writing to work within Microsoft Excel. I am doing it in Excel and not any other kind of language because to me, Excel is one of the most accessible types of things that people can do and VBA is very easy to learn. If you like this stuff that I am providing and the information that I'm handing out, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. That way you're notified as soon as the next video is up. If you have any family or friends or know anybody that's interested in sports betting that could use this information, please share the content. The whole goal is to get this information into everybody's hands. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That way I know that it is useful and also Google and YouTube know that it's useful. Every time you give a video a thumbs up, it runs through the algorithm and promotes the video up in search results and things like that. That way this content can help other people so that they can also learn how to grow and develop their own sports betting models and improve upon some of the skills they've already established. If you like the content, you can also subscribe to the channel. That way you get notified as soon as the next piece of content is ready and available. If you have any questions or concerns or need some assistance, feel free to drop a comment into the video. I'm more than willing to help you. If you also have ideas for things that you want to see, sports, different modeling methods, things like that, please let me know. Just drop it into the comments. You can also reach me on Twitter at Wagered on Tilt. I do help people with their models through that. I will answer messages and questions through there. So other than that, Happy wagering.